Okay, welcome to uh, another episode of Dissecting with Emily. And Emily Caggiano and I are here with the head of a African gray parrot, uh, which is very interesting. Parrots are really interesting for all kinds of reasons. We're interested in also what's going on inside here, which is uh, the brain. But today what we'll do is we'll focus on the feeding apparatus. I mean, here's the skull right here of uh, a different parrot species. So this is a scarlet macaw. And these guys are just tremendously uh, different uh, from other birds. You can see this palatine bone right here, which is almost vertical. Actually, you can compare it to a gull. Here's a gull skull over here. And you can see the palatine bones right here are more or less horizontal. Whereas you can see in the, in the uh, parrot are almost vertical for very powerful muscles. All right, let's go back to our African gray. And um, Emily, let's see if we can get that cranial kinesis go in there. So what you can see here, which is interesting, is that, um, well, basically when we want to open up our mouth, we lower our lower jaw. And birds can do that too, but you can also see that birds can actually raise their upper jaw. And parrots just do this amazingly. They have a very uh, highly developed uh, kinetic apparatus They've got a sort of a seam, a hinge along the top of their skull. And we can point out that craniofacial hinge. So that's that little line right there, that seam. And so that's the pivot point of where the upper jaw, um, we go to the side here, um, the upper jaw actually um, rotates relative to the brain case. So if we go back to a side view, uh, there are powerful muscles that will be driving that, but also powerful muscles that will be part of the feeding apparatus uh, for actually cracking seeds. The cool thing about parrots is they have two new muscles that other, um, other, other bird species don't have. Uh, one of them is called the pseudomasseter. I'm going to point out the pseudomasseter. That's that guy right there. So that's another powerful muscle that will help close the jaw. Uh, that one is descended from a group of muscles uh, called the adductor mandibuli externus. This one has a really nice uh, other new muscle called the ethmomandibularis. And can you show that for us, Emily? Yeah, that's that guy that sits right in there. And so ethmomandibularis is, is the derivative uh, based on the, the work of um, a developmental biologist named Tokita, publishing about a decade ago, that showed that the ethmomandibularis derives from a group of muscles called the pterygoideus muscles. And so if we sort of... Um, can you open up that jaw a little bit more there? You can start to really see, I'll get in here and point the, if I can, ethmomandibularis sits right in here. And you, you can actually see how it's, the muscle fibers kind of run like that. And the benefit of that for these birds is that those fiber, um, fiber direction really helps to crack nuts. They're gonna be sitting right in there, allowing parrots to bite really hard. All right, let's finish up again, um, just going at that kinetic mechanism again. If you can raise the, and lower the upper jaw. One of the things that we can see rocking back and forth there is the jugal bar, which we can see right in here, rocking back and forth, connecting the upper jaw to another bone back here, hiding underneath this muscle called the quadrate. And so there are powerful muscles that attach to these bones, causing the upper jaw to move forward, but also then to retract or pull back such um, that these animals can deliver really high bite forces to crack some really difficult leaves. Okay, so we just had a quick look at the, uh, the feeding apparatus, these two new muscles that parrots uh, evolved, the pseudomasseter and the ethmomandibularis. Uh, and so that was today's episode of Dissecting with Emily.